Hey everyone, um, we're going to do a quick look at Cheetah 3D's Skylight today. Uh, and if you've not used it before, it's pretty cool light. Um, basically, kind of substitutes for, well, it just does a really good job of lighting. Uh, I'll explain why and when you should use it and what you can do with it so you can kind of use it on your renders and, and make the most of it. Okay, so I've fired out a few renders here. As you can see, I'll just click through them. And these are all kind of using the skylight and not really changing that much. So it's just a simple model that I wanted to use as a demonstration purposes. But you can see the kind of we've got a dusky kind of render here. We've got one getting towards dusk. We've got one that's kind of got early morning style shadows. And then we've got one that's kind of much more in the middle of the day and the shadows are a lot shorter. So I'm going to show you how to set up the skylight now. Where you'll find it in Cheetah and what you can kind of do with it. So I'm just in Cheetah, I'm going to make a very basic document of just a disc with a ball sat on top of it. I'm going to go into front view, just position that ball so it's sat on that red line there. Let's make that disc a heck of a lot bigger. You'll notice I'm scaling these objects, which is not something that I normally recommend doing, but it's fine for what we're doing today. Okay, so. The cool thing about the skylight is, here it is in this menu here, I should say first, is that you don't really need any other kind of lighting setup or anything like that. You don't need any ambient occlusion, nothing like that. So you throw it into the mix. And it appears down in our object browser down here. And you'll kind of see some things that you can change instantly. The samples are quite high at 32 and it is not particularly fast to render um, the skylight, but it does give really good results. So you've got a few settings here, so you can set the date and the uh, time uh, and that will change your, you know, the whole way that kind of scene lights. Uh, you can change the latitude and longitude, so it's a good idea if you, I like to kind of choose the latitude and longitude of where I am or where I think the render is. So if it's something that I've modelled that I want to be in California where it's a lot hot and sunnier than what it is where I live, um, I'll put the latitude and longitude in for California and then we a date in the middle of summer something like that so i'm just going to play with that now i'm going to drag through actually in fact let's get this set up it's actually what is it today it's the 7th of april uh, and it's yeah i've completely undone that <laughs> let's just type that in again 7th of april and it's 1 23 Okay, now you see, you'll notice that it changed things there. I'm going to hit render pretty much straight away here. Someone's house alarm's going off as I'm trying to record this, wouldn't you know it? I'm going to just increase my output resolution and hit the render button. Okay, so we haven't done anything with the materials, which I didn't really want to anyway. Um, hopefully my fans are not too loud, even my new Mac sounds like it's quite loud on the fans. But what you'll see is, yeah, we've got the kind of some high in the sky, um, short shadows, um, pretty realistic render. Uh, just looking at some of these other renders that I did, the reason why the skylight renders really well is actually two light sources, not one light source. So the sky gives this kind of blue tint that you're seeing on everything, well depending on what kind of time you've got, you've got it set up at, but that's one light and that's kind of a real ambient light, it doesn't really provide any hardcore shadows in its own right, but what it does do is it lights from all angles, which is the key to lighting things realistically in 3D. Nothing in the real world is lit by really one source. Um, there's always bounced light, there's always another light source. There's not always another light source, but there's always bounced light and things like that that kind of make it seem like there's another light source. So because the skylight's got this surrounding sky kind of atmosphere that lights things, that does tend to give off the realism. Uh, and the second light that it's got is obviously the sun, and this is the one that casts these uh, hard edge shadows um, and again that, that just gives it some direction and a little bit more purpose so you've seen on the skylight how we can we can change the time and as we kind of pull through this I'm going to pull through this so it's going to change the time and you can see now do you see the sun there did you see it it's orbiting the object so if I take it to the middle of the night let's say 1 a.m. Let's hit the render button. Not much light at all. Which is what we want from the skylight. We don't 
really think it should really provide much light at 1am. Okay, I'm going to stop that render. Uh, the other thing to notice is that you can, if you put this geometry button here, as I render this, let's just change the time so it's a little bit more accurate. I'm going to pull these samples down to just 8, just for the sake of these renders that I'm doing now. Okay, what you'll see now, since I've clicked that geometry thing, sorry, geometry checkbox, we're now starting to see some background. You're not seeing it here, there's a big flood of black, and the reason is the skylight doesn't render anything below the kind of zero point of the floor. So, if you want to get around that, you can move your object up. And move the view down, let's just get these shifted right up. Let's see if that one's going to go. Actually, I've still got some visible there. Yeah, you can see I've kind of still got it there. So you, you'd either need an angle that's not going to really show that. Let's try this. So we'll see black now below here, but not above. So that's something to be aware of when you're using the skylight. But you get this nice kind of sky effect that, that works really well. You can see some, you might be able to see this on this uh, video, see some grain in the objects. Uh, that is totally down to the samples of the skylight. So I'd recommend kicking it right down, around 8 or 6 while you're testing, maybe even lower if your machine's not particularly quick. And then as you need to, just ramp that up on your renders. Um, for me, it starts a little bit high on the default settings. I don't think it really should be 32. I think it should probably be around 16. Uh, whether that will be happen or not, I don't know. But basically play around with the skylight, have some fun with it. Do remember though, in 3D you are trying to kind of simulate what you're actually modeling. So if you're modeling a box of a, a product um, and you've got it in, you, you want it rendered like a real box of a product would be done if for a product image or something like that, um, you wouldn't photograph that outside in reality so don't use a skylight for it because that is what a skylight simulates really it's for outdoor scenes um, you may have seen me use it in the past for a very very quick solution to getting a quick render out that's lit from all around wouldn't really recommend this don't get into the habit of using the skylight for internal renders and, and small scale renders and things like that it really is for outdoor scenes but it does a really good job of them so have a play around with that see if you can get something with it let me just go back to render manager if you model up some buildings and things like that it's absolutely brilliant it's so much fun to play with. this is the same model rendered three times with just different dates different longitudes and settings you can see the variety it gives you there so go have some fun with the skylight uh, and if you render anything cool let me know uh, as ever on the site mac 3d software loads more stuff for you to learn um, and i hope you enjoy watching thanks a lot guys